Here we have the dot structure for the ethyne molecule, also called the acetylene molecule. And we can see there's a triple bond present now. And each carbon is only bonded to two atoms this time. So if we look at this carbon on the left, it's bonded to two other atoms. And so I can see that the fact that there's a triple bond here and the fact that it's bonded to two other atoms uh, would make me think of a different type of hybridization, right? This can't be sp3 or sp2 hybridization. Let's look at the, the orbital notation to see if we can figure out the type of hybridization here. So once again, this shows the excited state for the valence electrons of carbon, right? So for the four valence electrons. And one of the electrons from the 2s orbital has already been promoted to the 2p orbital. For, for the example for acetylene, since carbon is bonded to two other atoms, we need to form two new hybridized orbitals. And we're going to form those hybrid orbitals by promoting the s orbital. So this is the s orbital with its one valence electron. And demoting, this time, only one of the p orbitals. So we're going to demote one of the p orbitals right, with its one valence electron. That leaves two p orbitals untouched. So we're going to leave these two p orbitals unhybridized up here. So we're going to take one s orbital and one p orbital, and we're going to hybridize them together uh, to create two sp hybrid orbitals. So this s orbital on the left, what used to be the s orbital, is now an sp hybrid orbital. This p orbital on the right is no longer a p orbital. It is an sp hybrid orbital. Since we formed our new orbitals from one s orbital and one p orbital, right? These are, this is called sp hybridization. So sp hybridization, like that. And when you when you see uh, when you see a triple bond present, right, you know that this carbon on one side of the triple bond is sp hybridized, and carbon over here on the left is also sp hybridized. So we have our new sp hybrid orbitals, which must therefore have 50% s character, right, and 50% p character. So the shape of an sp hybrid orbital is going to look a little bit more like 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 an s orbital than in our previous examples, right? So it's it's uh it's still going to have it's going to have two lobes, a front lobe and a back lobe, just like we saw for sp3 and sp2. The difference is we've increased the amount of s character even more. Now we're up to 50% s character, right? And since s orbitals are spherically shaped and smaller than p orbitals, we can expect uh, these lobes to be a little bit smaller as well. So we can expect this lobe to be a little bit smaller. We're once again going to ignore the back lobe when we do our drawing so that it doesn't confuse us. All right, so 50% s character, 50% p character. If I wanted to draw uh, a picture showing the acetylene molecule and showing it with its sp hybridized orbitals, right? So here's our acetylene molecule. We now know that each carbon is sp hybridized, which means that each carbon is going to have two sp hybrid orbitals around it. So these would be the two sp hybrid orbitals around it. Each sp hybrid orbital contains one valence electron. So let's go ahead and draw that. So we're going to draw the acetylene molecule molecule showing the sp hybrid orbital. So here's one of the carbons on acetylene. And uh, each carbon has two sp hybrid orbitals. So here is one of the sp hybrid orbitals. Once again, I'm ignoring the back lobe here. And, uh, and then here is the other sp hybrid orbital. Each orbital has one valence electron. So we go ahead and put our valence electrons in there. Uh, for the acetylene molecule, there's another carbon. It also is sp hybridized. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this carbon. It's sp hybridized, meaning there's one sp hybrid orbital. There's another sp hybrid orbital. I'm ignoring the back lobe, so it's not confusing. Each sp hybrid orbital has one valence electron. So I go ahead and put the one valence electron in each. All right, for the acetylene molecule, I have two hydrogens. One hydrogen is on the carbon on the left, and one hydrogen is on the carbon on the right. So I know that hydrogen has one valence electron, and that valence electron is in an s orbital. S orbitals are shaped like spheres. So here is the s orbital for the hydrogen atom, and then here is the, the valence electron for that hydrogen atom. So I go ahead and put in a hydrogen atom over here like that. Let's go back up here to our orbital diagram, right? So we can we can see that each sp hybridized carbon has two unhybridized p orbitals. Each of those unhybridized p orbitals has a, has a valence electron in it, right? So let's go ahead and draw that down here. This carbon on the left is sp hybridized. Therefore, I know it has two unhybridized p orbitals. Each p orbital is shaped like a dumbbell. So here is here is one p orbital, and I know it has one valence electron in it, like that. 
And so I need to draw another unhybridized p orbital, right? So here is another unhybridized p orbital, and there is its one valence electron. I do the same thing for the carbon on the right. And so the carbon right is also sp hybridized, which means it has uh, two unhybridized p orbitals. So here is one of the unhybridized p orbitals with its valence electron in it, and then I need one more. So here is the other p orbital, and here is the valence electron. Let's analyze our diagram and uh, figure out what types of bonds we have. So I can see that between my two carbon atoms, there is an overlap of these sp hybrid orbitals side, um, head on, I should say. So that, of course, is a sigma bond, right? Sigma bond comes from head on overlap of orbitals. I can see this is also a sigma bond between the sp hybridized orbital of the carbon and the s orbital of the hydrogen. And there is a sigma bond over here as well. So I can immediately see there are three sigma bonds in the acetylene molecule. When I look at the uh, the p orbitals, right? So these p orbitals here could never overlap head on, but if they were big enough and they got close enough together in space, you could see there'd be side by side overlap of those p orbitals. So we call that a pi bond, right? So there's one pi bond resulting from the side by side overlap of those two p orbitals. And if you look over here, there's also an opportunity to, for these p orbitals to overlap side by side. So there is another pi bond in the molecule. So there are a total of two pi pi bonds. So there are three sigma bonds and uh, two pi bonds in the molecule. Let's go back to this sigma bond really quickly. So if we look at this sigma bond, the one that's between my two carbon atoms, right? This sigma bond is formed from two sp hybrid orbitals, which we know are smaller than sp3 or sp2. And that's the reason why uh, you're going to see a triple bond uh, being shorter than, uh, than a double bond or a single bond. It has to do with the sp hybrid orbital. So if we go ahead and sketch out the, the dot structure really fast, right? we can see that triple bond there between the carbon atoms. And um, if, we, if, we analyze, if we analyze these bonds here, let's just do that really quickly. So if I look at the dot structure and I'm trying to figure out how many sig sigma or pi bonds I have, all I have to do is count up the single bonds uh, and uh, that'll tell me how many sigma bonds I have. So here's a single bond, so that's a sigma bond. Here's a single bond, so that's a sigma bond. And here I have the triple bond between my carbons. I know that one of those bonds is a sigma bond. It doesn't really matter which, which one you say it is uh, for the dot structure. So I'm just going to say it's this one. Right? So that gives me my three sigma bonds. When I'm trying to figure out pi bonds, uh, I, I know in a triple bond, there's one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So these, these must represent my pi bonds. And so, and so those are my two pi bonds like that. And so once again, for a, for a triple bond, right, this is going to be the shortest bond length due to the fact that the sigma bond um, comes from the overlap, the, the head-on overlap of two sp hybrid orbitals. When I think about, when I think about bond angles, Right, when I think about the angle between this hydrogen, this carbon, and this carbon here, uh, I can see that it's going to be, right, this is a straight line over here in my diagram. So let me see if I can draw this really fast. Right? So this is a straight line running through all of these atoms right here. So therefore, the bond angle must be 180 degrees. Right? So I have 180 degrees here. And you can see that that straight line runs through all of my sp hybrid orbitals. So it's those hybrid orbitals that are going to determine the geometry. The pi bonds will help to stabilize that and prevent any free rotation. Right? So the pi bonds are going to, are, are going to make sure that, that the triple bond uh, cannot to undergo any kind of free rotation. Let's do, let's do one example to sum up everything we've learned about sp3 hybridization, sp2, and sp. So if I start with uh, just a drawing of, of, a, of a molecule here. So let's go ahead and put in some carbons right, and some hydrogens like that. So here we have our molecule. and. Let's, let's try to answer a few questions about this molecule. The first question would be to identify the hybridization state of each carbon. Right? So if I look at, if I look at uh, this carbon, right, I can see that there is a double bond present. So I can immediately say it's sp2 hybridized. Same thing for, for this carbon. right? It also has a double bond, so it's sp2 hybridized. 
This carbon over here, right? This one has only single bonds around it. So we saw in the video in sp3 hybridization that this carbon must be sp3 hybridized. And we've just seen in this video how if you have a triple bond present, right, those carbons must be sp hybridized. All right, next let's think about let's think about uh the shape and also the bond angle, right? So if we uh so if we think about first let's just start with the sp3 Uh, hybridized carbon. We saw in the sp3 in the video on sp3 hybridization uh, that the the atoms around it want to try to adopt a tetrahedral uh, bond angle and to try to get as close as possible to 109.5 degrees. So that takes care of sp3 hybridization. Sp2 hybridization. Right, we saw that that's going to give us a trigonal planar geometry uh, for the atoms around those carbons with a bond angle of approximately 120 degrees. For sp hybridization, we saw in this video, right, that's going to be linear, which is why I've drawn the dot structure as being linear and giving us a bond angle of 180 degrees. Finally, let's let's count up the number of sigma and pi bonds in this molecule. So I'm going to start with the number of sigma bonds. So all I have to do is count up my my single bonds. So this is a this is 1 2 3 for a double bond i know one of those is a sigma bond for my video in sp2 hybridization so 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 and then in this video uh we saw that for a triple bond one of those is a sigma bond right so one of those is a sigma bond there so there's a total of 10 sigma bonds so we just counted 10 sigma bonds what about pi bonds Well, those would be the ones that are left, right? So in a double bond, you have one sigma bond and one pi bond. So this should be a pi bond. For a triple bond, we have one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So there are a total of three pi bonds for this molecule. So this is this is the type of question that you are usually asked uh in 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 a test for organic chemistry and you should be able to analyze organic molecules this way. It's an important skill uh for later in the course.